from Union Square in downtown San Francisco. It's the Cube covering PagerDuty Summit 18. Now here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at PagerDuty Summit at the Western St. Francis in Union Square, historic venue. Our second time to this show is about 900 uh, people here talking about kind of the future of DevOps, but going a lot further than, than DevOps. So we're excited to have a couple of CUBE alumni here uh, at the conference uh, from SignalFX. We've got Arjit Mukherjee, Mukherjee, Mukherjee yep. thank you, and uh, Karthik Rao, co-founder and CEO of SignalFX. Gentlemen, welcome. Yeah, thank Jeff, you very great much. Great to be back. So thank what you. are you doing at PagerDuty Summit? Uh, well, we've been partners with PagerDuty for a long time now. We've uh, known them since the very early days. We share a common investor. Uh, but we both operate very squarely in the, in the same space, which is uh, you know companies moving towards DevOps uh, development and deployment methodologies, leveraging cloud native architectures. Uh, we solve a, you know, a, a different part of the, the problem around monitoring and observation. Uh, and we partner with them very closely around incident management. Uh, you know, once a problem is detected, uh, we typically uh, integrate in with PagerDuty and trigger uh, whatever inc incident management paths that uh, you know our customers are orchestrating via PagerDuty. So it's been a really integral part of our entire workflow since uh, we started the company. Um, so we're very close partners with them. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, Jen announced they have like, 300 integrations or 300 plus integrations, whatever the number is. And, and to the outside looking in, it might look like a lot of those are competitive. Like there's a lot of kind of workflow and notification types of, of partners in that ecosystem, but in fact, lots of different people with lots of different slices of the pie. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really big problem space uh, that uh, everyone is trying to solve in this day and age. Uh, you know, some of our competitors are in that uh, in that list, but uh, you know, we partner very closely with PagerDuty. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, our focus really is around uh, problem detection uh, and leveraging the, the uh, most intelligent algorithm statistical models in real time to detect patterns that are occurring in a production environment. Uh, and triggering a, a, an alert. Uh, and typically we're integrating in with PagerDuty and PagerDuty deals with the human elements of once something has been detected, how do you manage that incident? How do you route it to the appropriate people? Uh, one of the things that's really interesting as this the world is changing towards these DevOps models is the number of people that have to get involved uh, is substantially greater than it was before. In the old days, you would have an alert go into a knock and you have a specialist group of people with very specific run books because your software wasn't changing very often. In today's world, your software is changing sometimes on a daily basis and it could be changing across dozens of teams, hundreds of teams and larger organizations. And so uh, there, there's a problem on the detection side because companies like SignalFX have to do a really great job of detecting problems as they emerge across these disparate teams, across a much, much, much larger environment with much larger volumes of data. Uh, and then companies like PagerDuty really have to deal with a far more complex uh, set of requirements around making sure the right people get notified at the right time. And, and uh, you know, so they're two very different problems and you know, we're very happy to, and have been partnering with them for a number right. of years now. And, the, and the, the, the complexity around the APIs and you know, where the app is running, I mean, there's like so many levels now of new complexity depend, you know, compared to when it was just one app you know, running on one system, uh, probably in your own data center, probably that you wrote compared to this kind of API-centric multi cloud yep. uh, world that we live in today. Yeah, that is exactly right, because what's happening is our application architectures are changing. So we used to have these monoliths, we used to have you know, three tiers and whatnot, and we're replacing that within microservices, loosely coupled systems and whatnot. At the same time, the substrate on which we are running those services, those are also changing, right? So instead of servers, now we have virtual machines, we have you know, cloud instances and containers and pods and what have you. So in a way, we are sort of growing below too, in some sense, right. and so that's why sort of monitoring this kind of a complex, more numerous environment is becoming a harder challenge. We're doing this for a good cause because we want to move faster, we want to innovate faster, but at the same time it's also making the established problems harder, which is sort of what requires newer tools, which right. sort of brings companies like us into the picture. Right. Yeah. And then just the sheer scale, volume, number uh, of data that's flowing through the pipes now on all these different applications is growing exponentially, right? We see it time and time yeah. again, so it really begs for a smarter approach. A absolutely, I mean, on, on two levels, right? The 
uh, number of minutes of software consumption is up exponentially, right? Since the smartphone came out in 2007, you've got billions of people connected to software now, connected all the time. So the load is up orders of magnitude, which is driving, even if you didn't change the architectures, you would have to build out substantially more back-end systems. But now the architectures are changing as well, where every physical server is now parceled up into VMs, which are parceled up into containers. Uh, and so the number of systems are also up by orders mm -hmm. of magnitude. Right. And so there's no possible way for a human to respond to individual alerts happening on individual systems, you're just going to drown in noise. That's right. So the, the requirements of this, of this new world really are you have to have an analytics-based approach to uh, monitoring and uh, more automation, uh, more uh, you know intelligence around detecting the patterns that really matter. Right, which is such a great opportunity for for artificial intelligence, right, and machine learning, and that's what we talk about it all the time. Everyone wants to talk about those kind of as 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 a vendor led something that you buy. Yeah, that's kind of okay, but really where the huge benefit is companies like you guys and PagerDuty using that technology integrated in with what you deliver on your core to do a much better job in this crazy increasing scale of, of volume yeah. that's running through the machine. Yes, because the systems are becoming so complex that even if you asked a human to go and you know set up the perfect monitoring or perfect alerting, et cetera, it might be quite a hard challenge, right? right. So as a result, sort of automation, computer uh, intelligence, et cetera, needs to be brought in to, to bear because because again, it's a more complex system, we need higher order systems to sort of deal with them. Right. You're very, very right, yes. And, and that's uh, a trend we are starting to see. Uh, within the product, we are actually focusing a lot on sort of data science capabilities with an eye towards sort of making them more and more sort of machine learning and automation in the future. Uh, we have uh, capabilities in the product that can look at populations and identify outliers, look at you know cyclical problems and identify outliers again. So the idea is to make it easy for users to monitor a complex system without having to get into the guts, so to speak. Right, and to do it on various sorts of data, right? I think you have an interesting use case that we've been experimenting with recently. That's right. You want to talk yeah, about so that. I actually have a talk tomorrow. It's quite an interesting one. It's about uh, monitoring uh, social signals, monitoring humans. So, you know, we have these systems, we have these metrics platforms, and they are quite generic. The tools that we have nowadays in this sort of available to us are quite powerful. And uh, the, the set of inputs need not be isolated to what the computers are telling me. Why not look at other signals? Why not look at business signals? In my case, I'm going to talk about monitoring what the humans are doing on Slack as a way for me to know whether there's something of interest that's going on in my infrastructure, in my service, that I need to be aware of. Right. And you'll be shocked how surprisingly accurate uh, it tends to be. <laughs> and it's just an interesting thing, and you know, it, it makes one wonder, like, what else is out there for right, us to right. sort of look at? Why, why confine ourselves? Right, right. it's yeah. funny, because we hear about sentiment analysis and social media, mm -hmm. you know, all the time, but more in the context of, you know, Pepsi or, or, or a big consumer brand that's trying to figure out how people feel. Right. But, but to do it inside your own company on your own yeah. internal tool like a Slack, that's a whole different level and of insight. You'd be surprised at the number of companies that monitor Twitter to understand whether they have that's an outage. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, because in this day and age, uh, users are on Twitter within seconds if something is perceived to be slow or something is perceived to be town. You know, they're they're on Twitter, so there are all sorts of other interesting signals to right, potentially right. pull from. Oh, and guess what? We were just at AT and T Spark yesterday, and the five G's coming, and it's like a hundred x more data be flowing yeah. through the mobile. So the problem's not going to get any smaller anytime soon. No, absolutely. So, what else have you guys been up to since we last spoke? Uh, Continue we've been to grow, making some some interesting moves. Absolutely, we've been oceans. very very busy. One of the big uh, areas of investment for us has been uh, international growth. So we've been investing quite a bit in Europe. Uh, we have just uh, introduced a, an instance of our service that's based in a European data center uh, for a lot of our European-based clients. They prefer to have data locality, data residency within the European Union. Uh, so that's uh, something new that we just introduced last month, continue to have a ton of momentum uh, out in EMEA. Uh, they're very much on the, the cloud journey and uh, embracing cloud and embracing DevOps. So it's, it's really great to see that momentum right. out there. And clearly with GDP, GDPR and those types of things, you have to have a presence for, yes, for certain types of customers, certain types of data. Um, anything surprising in, in that move that you didn't expect or? Uh, no, I, I, I don't know, I'll let you know, view. Uh, not in that move. Um, 
but it's just interesting to see how quickly some of these modern technologies are getting adopted and how uh, one of the things sort of we talk about a lot in our trade is uh, ephemeral right so how things are short-lived nowadays and you know you used to lease these servers that used to stay in your data center for three years then you went to Amazon and you leased your instances which probably live for a few months or a few days then they became containers and the containers sometimes live for a few hours or for a, you know and then you know if you think about serverless and whatnot it's in a whole different level and the amount of ephemeral that's going on, especially in the more cloud native companies, right. uh, was a little bit of a surprise in the sense that it actually poses a very interesting challenge and how do you monitor something that's changing so fast? And we had to have a lot of um, engineering put into sort of make that problem more tractable for us. And it continues to be an area of investment. That to me was something that was a little bit of a surprise when we started off. Uh, much of this uh, you know, Dockerization and Kubernetes was not yet in place. And right, so, uh, right. so that was an interesting uh, technical challenge as well as a surprise. Yeah. Well, too, I'm curious too, as instances, right, so there's the core instances that are running core businesses that don't change that much, but as it's, you know, it's a promotion, it's a, it's a this or that, right? It's a spin up app and a spin down app. You know, are those even going up on the same infrastructure from the first time they do it to the second time they do it? I mean, how much are you learning that you can leverage as people, you know, are doing things differently over and over again, you know, as their objectives change, their applications change, they're kind of go to market around that specific application. That's changed changing all the time as well. Yeah, so I think uh, the challenge there is to sort of build, at least from, from a technical point of view, from single effects point of view, is build something that is versatile enough to handle these different use cases. Because new use cases, new ways of doing things are going to continue to happen, probably going to keep on accelerating. So the challenge for us is good and bad, is how do we make a platform that is generic, that can be used for anything that may come down the pike, not only just now. At the second time, how do we innovate to continue to be you know, up to speed with the latest of that's what's going on in terms of infrastructure trends, you know, software delivery trends and whatnot. Because if we are not able to do that, then that puts us sort of behind. So, right, right. So it's say, uh, you know, sort of a lot of frenetic innovation, right. but it's also exciting right. at the same time. Right, yeah. and just the, just the whole concept too, where I think, you know, what's what's best practice quickly becomes, you know, expected baseline. That's correct. Really, really fast. I mean, what, what's like cutting edge, innovative, now unfortunately, or fortunately, that becomes the benchmark by which everything else is measured mm -hmm. overnight. That That's the thing that just amazes me. What was magical yesterday is just expected boring behavior <laughs> today. Mm -hmm. All right, good, so as we get to the end of the year, a lot of exciting stuff, you guys said you're going to be at reInvent, we will see you there. Anything else that you're looking forward to over the next couple of months? Uh, just, we're really excited about reInvent's big show for us, and uh, we'll have some good uh, announcements uh, around the show. Um, and yeah, looking forward to just continuing to do what we've been doing and deliver more value to our customers. Love it, just keep working hard. Yeah, All you. right, Arjit, hope, uh, hope your throat gets better before your big uh, yeah, talk tomorrow. That's right. All right, <laughs> okay. thanks for stopping by, Carl. Thank you, it's great to see you. Great to see you. I'm Jeff, you're watching theCUBE. We're at PagerDuty Summit at the Western St. Francis in San Francisco. Thanks for watching, see you next time.